Now, as we gear up for the spring and maybe summer, Yay. it's time to update our wardrobe, skincare, and our wine. Joining us now to share some spring and summer wine recommendations is wine concierge, director William Hightower. Thank you so much for being here. Love being here. Thank you guys for having me as always. Well, anytime you bring in all this lovely wine, <laughs> you come back all the time. That's awesome, awesome. And talking about warmer weather. So what is the best way to transition to our spring and summer wines? Yes. Yeah, so I, uh, thank you for again for the invitation. I love talking about transitioning from winter reds and or winter whites to spring and summer white wines and so one of the greatest way to get started is some of our sparkling wines or rosés mm. and white wines and even some reds that I want to recommend for you guys today so but enough talking I want to pour and we can uh, discuss a little <laughs> further so the first wine that I would like to uh, discuss is the uh, Acaba from Spain and so this is a sparkling wine that is made in the traditional method which is like the champagne method mm -hmm. so it's going to give champagne notes but a fraction of the cost so I love to talk about Cabra Cabo. because it's going to again to showcase a lot of the champagne notes. How is that different than Prosecco? So it's made in the, um, well, first of all, it's a totally different grape or grapes. Okay. So that's the, one of the main differences, but uh -huh. it's made in the champagne method, so it go, goes through secondary fermentation, so it ferments again within the bottle, oh. and it's gonna give a certain type of mouthfeel. Yes, cheers. Okay. So it's gonna have a certain type of mouthfeel. This wine is gonna go very well as far as like with seafood, but this is a great uh, party starter, so yes. to speak. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you're having guests mm -hmm. over, if you're having rooftop parties or things like that, this is a great way to get the, uh, the party started. I love the mouthfeel, it's frothy, mm -hmm. but it still has a lot of apple notes, and it goes great with oysters and grilled fish and things mm -hmm. like that. That sounds so good. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. No oysters, no grilled fish? <laughs> <laughs> what more do you yeah. want? Oh my God, I brought you down just messing with you. Okay. No, all good. Let's move it on to Let's the rosé. Yeah, so rosé is a staple for summer. You yes. know, they say rosé all day. You have people wearing the pink parties and wearing the clothes with the pink on it. So rosé is a staple for summertime. However, when we are talking rosé, we want to discuss the differences between the rosé. And I feel like I've discussed this with you guys before. Looking at the color to determine the flavor profile. So I've brought a Trianne Rosé from uh, the Provence region of France. Okay. Trianne is very, uh, a, a very uh, standard for dry rosé because it's okay. lighter pink. If you buy a wine or rosé that has more of a richer salmon color, it's going to be more of those watermelon, strawberry mm. notes. But this has a strawberry note, but it's also kiwi. It's very, very light and crisp mm. and acidic. Mm. Yeah, the acid. So the acid is really going to pick up because it's on a cool, uh, grown in a cooler climate. And so it's really going to speak to, again, mm. like the, the, the salmon or the grilled fish or things like that or even chicken but something to have a lot of fun when it's warm outside. I like Another that. reminder, rosés are not always sweet. Not right? always sweet. So again, if you're a fan of something that is a little bit more fruit forward or sweeter, look for something that has a little bit more of a salmon pink as opposed to that very, very light pink. So what we have today is a very lighter pink mm -hmm. color profile mm -hmm. and so because of that, it's going to be relatively dry. Got it. Okay. Okay. All, right. All right. All right. Moving into another white. Huh? Yes. I I'm excited to uh, showcase this one because a lot of people love, they know Chardonnay. Chardonnay is a queen grape variety in the wine industry, but I brought a Chenin Blanc from South Africa. Chenin Blanc? Yes, and so excited to present the uh, South African wines because they're really making a, a big impact in the wine industry. This one is from the Western Cape region of South Africa. This is the uh, from the Kamusha winery within South Africa, making beautiful, beautiful wines. And this has some bubbles too. That's a little bit of a bubble because of the, uh, again, the acid and things like that, but it's not a sparkling wine. Okay. But oh, okay. For what this particular wine is going to get like honey notes, very floral, uh, again, the acid, but Ooh. it's going to have a lot more body than mm. some of the like mm -hmm. a Pinot Grigio yeah. or things like that. So mm -hmm. if you want something to sustain against like chicken or poultry Ooh, or good. things mm -hmm. like that, yeah I, good, yeah, I really love a Chenin Blanc and I really mm -hmm. like to promote it a little bit more because it's something a little bit off the beaten path yeah. mm -hmm. as opposed to just your classic classic Sauvignon Blancs or your classic Chardonnay. And if you want to impress your guests, right. they're like, oh, turn Look on Chenin Blanc. There you go. Oh, right. <laughs> and it's a good conversation starter. Yeah. It's something a little bit different, mm -hmm. but still packs a punch with flavor because a lot of white wines are um, lighter body. Yeah. So if you want something with a little bit more heft to it, but not overly so, like a buttery or oaky Chardonnay, I would recommend a Chenin Blanc. I feel like it's a perfect marriage of what we yeah. like. It's yeah. like a little bit more sweet, but not super yeah. sweet. I, yeah. Thank you for saying that because yeah. I know you guys have different yeah. palates. Mm -hmm. So when I prepare wine for you, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is kind of like right in the middle there, and uh, I like it because it's dry, but it has body to it. Yeah. And I love that honey note as well. So uh, again, this stands up with some of the poultry dishes that you might want to enjoy in the summertime. Okay, okay, and a Pinot good. Noir. And a yes. Pinot Noir. So when we're talking red wine, mm -hmm. you got to be cognizant. I don't. If it's 90 degrees outside, be careful with those calves. Be careful with those small backs and the Syrahs. Okay. However, Pinot Noir is a very thin-skinned grape, so the tannins are very, very light. So that is going to allow you to enjoy a red 
red wine when it's warm outside, mm -hmm. but not get so overly heated. Mm -hmm. but this, so this is the Elihe wine, and this is, I'm sorry, Elihe from the Willamette Valley, Oregon uh, region. Mm. And it is uh, one of the best mm -hmm. regions for growing, mm. for growing Pinot Noir. Very similar to what they have in Burgundy, France, but we're, for a fraction of the cost again. And so we're really going to be enjoying some of those strawberry notes, forest yeah. floor, mm -hmm. earthiness, mm -hmm. oregano, things like that. So, and you serve this a little cooler? You do serve a cooler. I would okay. definitely recommend this between 55 and 60 degrees okay. because um, you want to have a slight chill on it because it's, it's grown in a cooler climate, so you want to enjoy it a little bit chill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I yeah, really love these, uh, this lineup for summertime wines. And, and you said this goes well with what now? That's, uh, so a lot of different things. So poultry, but then you can go lamb um, mm. or I wouldn't go like a, a New York strip or ribeye or anything like a lot of fat on it, but okay. definitely the, the biggest poultry for this would be like a rosemary lamb or something that's like that. It's a good Easter got. wine. Yeah. Oh, I think that's a, yeah, absolutely. That's a great thing. Right. Oh, well, yeah. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going Chenin Blanc. Okay. Yes. Chenin Blanc. Keep it okay. in the rotation. You won't okay. be sorry. Okay. <laughs> thank All you. Right. My pleasure. Well, thank you, William. Absolutely. Uh, information for cuvee concierge.com is where we find you. All right. Fantastic. Thank you.